non-fungible tokens as everyone's been talking about bitcoin ethereum other uh, cryptocurrencies there's been an asset class in the cryptocurrency space that's been creeping up and gaining a lot more traction and that's the nft space non-fungible tokens and in this video i'll be talking to you about these non-fungible tokens explaining what they are why some people are paying hundreds of ETH to buy different nft tokens that are cards or maybe crypto kitties uh, looking at different use cases as well as the future perspective of the nft space and at the end of the video i'll be showing you how you can actually buy and also create your own nft tokens on rarible so a lot of juicy content for you guys if you're new to the channel my name is kieran and i'll be your guide on your DeFi adventure making sure that you're safe in the space so definitely make sure to subscribe if you want to uh, get all the information that you need to avoid scams, hacks, and also maybe make better decisions. I want to be your map and compass to make sure that you can reach your goal of financial independence. With that out of the way, let's jump right into non-fungible tokens. So this article here, it's actually a very great um, magazine style website by Cointelegraph. I'll link it down below. So there's a lot of exciting use cases for non-fungible tokens. I'll start first by explaining what fungibility is and why it's super important for the NFT space and these NFT tokens. Because if you understand the concept, you can also understand the possibilities. So fungible versus non-fungible, what is the difference? Well, fungible is actually really easy to explain. Something that you can uh, replace with something else. It doesn't have to be unique, but it has the same value. Now, uh, an example for that would be the US dollar or another fiat currency, maybe Swiss francs or euro. If I would lend 100 US dollars to a friend of mine, and I give him some banknotes and he wants to give me this value back. He doesn't have to give me the same banknotes back. He can give me other banknotes or even coins in the same valuation. So each coin, even though it's unique, it's got a value and I can exchange that with another coin that's going to have the same value. So that's the idea of fungibility. So each element is not unique on its own. Now with non-fungible, that means each element is unique. So that means if I've got an artwork that I drew, that artwork is unique. Um, another artwork might have another valuation. This artwork has its own valuation since they're not like infinite amounts of this artwork. So non-fungible means that you cannot just replace it with another element. You, it's, it's unique on its own. Like you are unique, I'm unique, we are non-fungible. All right, now the value proposition of NFTs are the following. Like we just discussed, they're non-fungible. That means they are unique. So deep inside this non-fungible token, there's like all the data that is uh, locked in this token and it makes it a permanent, unalterable record that describes what this NFT represents. That means you are owning it. It's rare. Some NFTs might have um, 100 uh, pieces to it. So it's a limited edition of 100, but there might, there might be also NFT tokens that are only limited to one piece or five piece. So um, depending on what the creator decided, he can increase the rarity of, of the NFT tokens. Indivisible, unlike uh, Bitcoin or Ether, um, you cannot divide uh, a NFT token. So you can just buy a whole one. So it's just one unit of an NFT token. Not like with Bitcoin that you can get decimal amounts of Bitcoin. So NFT has a lot of different use cases. And first we'll look at why NFTs are actually so exciting. So ownership is a very important attribute of NFT tokens. So as an example, um, very often the NFT space is um, people talk about artworks being NFT. Of course that's true, but there are some NFTs that are actually really interesting because they've got a lot of use case. For example, Twitter handle could be an NFT token, uh, domain name could be an NFT token, and people have been uh, trading domain names, Twitter handles, and so on, even though if it, <laughs> it goes against the term of use of most platforms, they've still been trading it. And having such a uh, uh, an account as an NFT token makes it much easier to trade it and sell it for um, a sum of money. They're transferable. Not only can you sell then this NFT, you can transfer it to another account. If he's got an Ethereum wallet, you can send this NFT token to the other person. And it means that he owns uh, whatever um, digital or physical asset is represented by the NFT token. Authenticity. And this is a a topic I talked about in one of my last videos about Brightling. They are now creating NFT tokens to uh, verify the authenticity of the watches. And that is great because if I've got now a Brightling watch and I want to sell it to someone, I can prove the authenticity of this watch by maybe um, holding a unique NFT token that is 
uh, that has maybe the, the, the identification number of the watch. So that proves that this, this uh, watch is authentic. And it will also definitely increase the resale value if I want to uh, set it on the secondary market. I think this is great because watches are plagued with counterfeits. This is pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> this Crypto Kitty was sold for 600 ETH. 170,000 US dollars uh, during the 2017 bull run. Now, the interesting thing about Kubernetes and the NFT market that it represents is that it was so popular, it clogged the Ethereum blockchain during the time. I remember that the gas fees were um, staggeringly high. And yeah, many people were complaining about that. So CryptoKitties definitely um, left a big impact in the Ethereum space and brought a lot of people together to talk about scalability issues. So here are the NFT use cases that are possible. So art is a big one. Artists all around the world are already starting to create artworks and put them on the, the blockchain. Uh, there are different pla some fl platforms where you can sell NFT artworks. Rarible is one which we'll be looking at in a bit. Then you've got collectibles like cards, um, so, for example, like trading cards that you can either use in the game, Unch um, Gods Unchained is an example for that. And then you can collect these cards and you can play with them, but also maybe um, stickers for um, baseball um, teams or even players or football players. And if those teams actually enter the space, a lot of uh, new cryptocurrency users, uh, a new cryptocurrency users will be introduced to NFT tokens, even though they might not understand the underlying concept um, behind the NFT tokens, they're just interested in these collectibles. So gaming is also a massive area where NFTs have a lot of potential. I mean, there's already been many uh, thriving game markets, such as um, Counter-Strike, weapon skin market, then you've got also World of Warcraft market, where people have already been selling and trading at different skins and digital items for a long time. I mean, most games that are free to play have some form of um, digital items that are traded and actually have a monetary value. Now with the NFT space, these items actually become unique, um, tradable in a much easier fashion, and also can retain their value um, outside of the game's boundaries. Now, of course, some gaming companies might not really want that. They want to keep their market in their own game universe, but other, other game companies are going to capitalize on, on this new trend and start creating weapons that you players can trade with each other because they are NFT tokens. Then you've got virtual assets, which of course goes hand in hand with gaming since these are also virtual assets, but it goes even further. I mean, you've got the Ethereum name service, which allows people to get .eth domains, also get um, the unstoppable domains for people that want to have .crypto domains. Then you've also got uh, games such as Decentraland or CryptoVoxes, which allow people to buy plots of land, build on that land, buy items uh, for that land, and also charge a rent from other players to maybe exhibit some um, pieces of artwork or whatever uh, comes to their mind. And then you've got real world assets, which means that people can either um, tokenize a car or also tokenize a watch or shoes or whatever they want uh, to verify the authenticity is definitely one big use case. Then you've got identity, which I think is a very interesting um, area. And that means people could maybe uh, create NFT tokens for their own identity, to prove their own identity. Uh, also maybe to unlock different uh, places. Maybe they could enter the house thanks to their NFT token, uh, which proves their identity. They could also maybe create clones of their identity to allow other people to maybe enter certain areas uh, because um, they would have the same permissions. So here are a few of the most known projects in the, non, in the NFT space. You've got My Crypto Heroes, which is a Japanese battle game. You've got Gods Unchained, which is a competitive card game. Some of the cards went for a lot of ETH, which we'll see in just a bit. Crypto Kitties, which crashed, <laughs> didn't actually crash, but clogged up the Ethereum blockchain in 2017. It's, it's very similar to Tamagotchi, where you got these little um, digital kitties that you can pair with each other and it creates a new kitty and you can uh, trade these um, it is basically an added version, a blockchain added version of um, Tamagotchi. Then you've got Decentraland, very similar to a Second Life. Um, it's still in its um, infancy, but it's, it's, it's a pretty good uh, concept. It allows people to buy land, sell land, um, build different buildings on that land. And actually the land parcels go for a lot of money. All right, so here are the most expensive NFTs that were sold in 2019. Um, God's Unchained Atlas card. Uh, this, so this uh, is an Ethereum-based card game. There's only four Mythic cards. That means it's very rare. And someone managed to open it and he sold it for 210 ETH, $31,000 at the time. And another Gods Unchained card, Prometheus card, which went for 235 ETH, $35,000, $250 at the time. Crypto Space Commander Battle Cruiser, 
a digital um, battle cruiser that helps you have a uh, advantage on the enemy uh, since it can travel as fast and sneak up on enemies 250 ETH, 45,250 dollars at the time the central land the secrets of satoshi's tea garden the cluster of land passes was in the most sought after area of this virtual reality platform 1.3 million mana 80,663 dollars at the time and this definitely could buy you maybe a very small house um, in a cheaper part of the united states so imagine paying 80,663 dollars for a piece of virtual land but jokes aside it, the prices are increasing so i don't think it's even that bad of an investment that you bought it in 2019 and last but not least we've got f1 delta time apex racer which went for 415.9 if it's a actually it's a uh, one of a kind digital formula one race car and it offers an edge in game it went for 113,124 dollars you could buy a tesla or another really fancy car for this amount of money so there are definitely quite a lot of pros and cons. I go through these pretty fast. So first of all, they can unlock a new revenue stream, gaming, sports, arts, and technology. I mean, artists can put their artworks onto different platforms for people to buy. Um, then of course, um, gaming, you're gonna have the uh, gaming economy is gonna increase massively because really play games have now um, not really had the best solutions to to sell different items um, and, and players might also want to trade these items if they go from one game to another. So allowing users to maybe have these in-game items as NFT tokens will open up a lot more um, of revenue streams because a lot more people are going to buy these tokens, they're going to retain their value and they can uh, resell them. Now, of course, it's not very easy to build um, applications or games that use um, non-fungible tokens. NFTs could introduce millions of people to cryptocurrencies is definitely a good thing, even though they don't really understand, or many of these people won't really understand the underlying technology of a cryptocurrency, of, of blockchain, and they don't really need to know that to, to be able to use these NFT tokens. However, it does have to become a lot easier to use for um, the general population that doesn't really understand blockchain. So it definitely needs a lot more simplification at the moment. It's pretty difficult to use. You have to understand how to use wallets, gas fees, and all of that um, complicated stuff like the internet in the 1990s. So they can transform our attitude, uh, attitude towards ownership and make it possible to own a real world asset that's thousands of miles away. I think this is also very interesting, especially um, being able to own, for example, um, a very small part of a house or maybe even a yacht or whatever. Um, and, and splitting it among a lot of people. Now, of course, there's definitely uh, a downside and that is the hot potato effect. And I think I've been seeing this quite a lot. I'm not gonna name any names, but there are some YouTubers that are creating some NFT artworks worth several hundreds of ETH, or they're selling different NFT artworks to, to their subscribers. And I've also seen uh, different uh, platforms like NFT farming and so on, which promises NFT tokens that are worth uh, a lot of ETH. Now, the thing is anyone can create an NFT token. They can put any price tag on this NFT token, but it doesn't mean that this NFT token is actually going to have that value. So you're gonna have the hot potato effect. Someone might buy a token because he thinks it's gonna have a lot of value in the future, but if no one is willing to pay the price afterwards, then you're stuck with a valueless NFT. Token. This is something you have to keep in mind. Not just because it's got a price tag of a several hundred ETH on it means it actually is that valuable. So let's look at how NFTs are made. It's actually really interesting. It's got a lot of components. So NFT tokens are um, ERC721 contract. So you might already be aware of what ERC20 tokens are, but the NFT tokens uh, use ERC721 um, contracts with solidity. So they're different elements. You've got the ID, You've got the name, you've got the owner, which is also locked up in, uh, in the ERC721 contract. And you've got all the metadata where it's stored. So probably on the IPFS, um, decentralized um, file storage system. So that all together makes it non-fungible, uh, immutable, uh, transferable <laughs> token. Let's quickly look at the NFT industry stats. So as you can see, it's been growing a lot. 2020 forecast plus 50%. In 2019, only plus 17%. Of course, 2018, where it actually began because that was after the 2017 um, bull run. I mean, with CryptoKitties happening at the end of 2017, it's, it's normal that we had such a massive rise in 2018. But I don't see this um, stopping anytime soon. 2021 is definitely going to be very um, beneficial for the NFT um, ecosystem. 
Then you've got here player count is also of course increasing massively from 2017 to 2018 plus 92 percent not a lot of change between 2018 and 2019 because of the bear market not many people are interested but 2020 has brought a lot more life into the nft space with an increase of plus 30 percent 147,000 players and i think this number is going to increase even more as more people get introduced to NFT tokens. So next up, you'll find out how you can actually buy your first NFT token. And also maybe if you'd like, create one as well. And we'll be doing that on Rarible. But before you do, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I create a lot of DeFi content I'm sure you'll find interesting and acclimatize you to the whole DeFi space, making sure that you understand everything you need to know to be successful. All right, let's jump over to Rarible. For this to work, you definitely need an Ethereum wallet. There's many different flavors you can um, connect to Rarible with a MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, and also Trust wallet. When you're on the, the Rarible Connect page, you can actually connect with MetaMask, Formatic, Wallet Connect, and also Wallet Link. And we'll be using the Wallet Connect app. I'll get my trusty mobile phone open, open the Trust wallet. And then I just have to click on Wallet Connect. And I click the confirmation that I am 30 years, at least 30 years old, and accept the Rarible terms of service. All right, so now we're logged in to Rarible. And as you can see, there are many different um, artworks that you see here. People have uploaded um, GIFs and pictures, and if made a certain amount of them. So for example, this one here, the last Ether, has five NFT tokens of this artwork and they each cost you 0.07 ETH. So here you can actually look, maybe you already know some artist that you'd like to um, buy some artwork from. You're just gonna have to have some ETH in your wallet and you go and scroll down, you either find the artworks that you wanna buy or, or maybe the artist that you um, really like his artwork. And then you can just click on the one that you'd like to buy. And so for example, here we've got one from uh, Ivan on Tech. He created 300 NFT tokens of this unique big boy pants card. Well, here you've got the Fancy Nana. So let's say I'd like to buy the Fancy Nana NFT token. And what I would have to do is make sure I've got enough ETH in my wallet. And I'll just click here and click buy one for 0 0.092 ETH. And the great thing here is that for certain NFT tokens, especially artworks, there's going to be a creator fee, a royalty fee. Um, every time that I would then sell this artwork, the creator um, would get a certain percentage. So in this case, you would get 15% of the sales for each of these tokens that gets resold will go to the creator and ghost. I just have to click on buy one. I would click on proceed to payment. 15% goes to ghost and I would have to pay 0.09 dollars for this uh, NFT token and proceed to payment. And then I would assign this transaction on my trust wallet. Well, I don't really want to buy this, so we're going to cancel that. All right, so that, that's, that's basically how you can buy an NFT token. Now, there, there are some interesting aspects of NFT tokens that I don't think a lot of people have addressed. So for example, an artist can provide a uh, link an ipfs link to the high resolution version of his artwork so let's say this fancy nana is just a small picture and if i buy this nft token i will get a link to the high resolution version of this image so that might be a way for artists to sell high resolution images or maybe um, some uh, youtubers or instagrammers to create another version of OnlyFans where they present the nft token as a blurred image and when someone buys this token uh, they will get the unblurred version of the image and i guess you can imagine for what purposes uh, that would be used for so those are two different uh, versions what you could also probably do is you don't have to have like a full resolution image but it could also be a link to a video so for example uh, theoretically i could create an uh, interesting video that would be premium and people could buy the NFT token and by buying the NFT token, they could access this premium video. And when they've watched the video and don't want it anymore, they could resell this token, um, which, is, which is pretty interesting. It's like a type of um, lending mechanism. All right, so those are a few other use cases of these uh, NFT tokens um, in terms of providing a lot more value to the people buying it apart from just uh, as a collectible. So let's head over and create uh, a new artwork. And I'm gonna create an artwork for my channel. So if I first click on the account, my account here, you can already see what 
artworks I've created or received. So I've got one proof of attendance token from the Topaz testnet because I participated in that. And I also created one other uh, NFT token, which is a unique one for the ETH 2.0 Serum NFT upgrade. All right, to create your new NFT token, you can click on Create Collectible. Now you're gonna to have to decide if you want your collectible to be one of a kind or multiple if you wanna sell one collectible multiple times. So this is gonna decide the rarity of your uh, NFT token. And I'm gonna create multiple. I'm gonna create a limited edition of your DeFi guide GIF. But here you can choose an image. It can be either GPG, PNG, or a GIF, and it has to be underneath 10 megabytes in size. So I've got it right here. I think it's around eight megabytes. And I can upload it. I'll give it a name. And as soon as it's uploaded, I see the preview here on the right and here on the left. All right, so I go down, I'll create the name. Fine. Adventure. And I'll give it a, so this is going to be a proof of attendance and token that you are a loyal sub 5k subscriber. Right. Then numbers of copies, I'm going to limit this to 100 copies. And that's going to be it. So here is what I mentioned before. Um, you could actually add maybe a link, a video or a document or something like that if I click on this. And I could maybe put the link to, a, to a, like a premium video that you would get access to when you unlock this uh, NFT token or even a PDF guide or anything, a high resolution uh, image of this GIF or anything um, in that regard. But I'm not going to be doing this uh, for this token. I might do it in, in the future. Let's see. Uh, it does sound like a good idea. Maybe I might release a course or something like that. And then I could sell it by providing uh, an NFT token uh, for sale and then a link um, to access the course. That might be an idea uh, for a future project. So the royalties I leave at 10%. Then I can also set the price down here below. And I don't know, maybe I'll put it at 0 0.08. That's fairly okay. I think it's a bit too high. Let's put it at 0 0.05. And this is basically um, a token that shows that you are part of the sub 5,000 uh, subscribers of my channel. It also helps me, of course, create a lot more content and spend a lot more time creating the videos if you want to support my channel. Um, let's keep the royalties at 10%. And then I can just click on create and it will create 100 versions of this uh, NFT token. So I click on create. I have to open up my trust wallet to sign this transaction. I'm going to have to sign it a few times. So I'm going to have to approve this NFT token. It's going to take a little bit of time for this uh, signature to be accepted in the next block on the Ethereum blockchain. And so the cost to mint the token is probably around $10 or $15 uh, if you take all these transactions and sum the costs up together. And of course, it depends on how clogged the Ethereum blockchain is. So it's, it's definitely not cheap. And uh, hopefully this will be soon solved with EMP1559 as well as the... Um, if you want to 2.0 blockchain and layer two scaling solutions, but I'm gonna to have to be a little bit patient for that. All right, so while I'm waiting for this uh, approval to be accepted in the next block, I've got a quick announcement and that's about the next event, which is pretty interesting. It's um, EY Global Blockchain Summit, which is taking place on the 2nd of November at 1 p.m. CAT time. So you can sign up with the link down below. It's completely free to attend. And this is super interesting. I'm going to be talking about a lot of DeFi related topics or Ethereum related topics. And also what the great news is, is that I've got a 15 minute slot at the end of the presentation that is allocated for me. So I'll be uh, presenting some information about Ethereum 2.0 and two scaling solutions and so on. So I highly recommend that you uh, attend and sign up. I mean, it's, it's really interesting to see what one of the big four players is doing in the space. So let's go back to our uh, NFT token. So I think here sometimes what you have to do is you have to um, close this and then you click on the create button again. And then what it would do, it would open up the next step. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always uh, update it. So you have to close this window and then wait for the next one. And for me, what I also have to do is I sometimes have to click on follow wallet instructions um, to get the next signature. But I received the next signature. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Not sure if it... Uh, if it focuses, yeah, now I just have to click on send. So it's gonna cost me $5, and it's also gonna be approved in the next block in a few minutes. Luckily, the gas fees at the moment are not too high, so um, minting this new token is not gonna be super expensive, but it'll probably take a few seconds or even a minute for this to uh, go forward. Again, I'll, I'll just close this, and then I'll open it up again. 
and hopefully the nest part is already finished and I can continue, not yet. What you can do is if you're not sure if it's went through, you can actually check Etherscan to see if the transaction went through and then you can look at how long uh, the block time um, should take until it's uh, added to the next block. So here it should be added in less than 45 seconds, which is uh, definitely a lot faster than the times I've seen in the last few weeks. And a uh, quick info, as soon as it's added to the next block, then you can close the follow steps window and open it up again. It's a bit of a hassle at the moment. I hope this process um, is made a bit easier because there are many um, approvals that have to be done and it's not done in one single transaction. So I'd like maybe um, in the future that all of this can be done in a single transaction and not um, three or four different ones. So it's been added to the next block. So what I can do now is just cl close this. Now open it up again. And now, So this is a problem that I've seen that happens to me is that um, after I've minted the token, it will not update um, this little pop-up window. So we'll just ask you to mint the token over and over again. So I don't recommend doing that because if you do that, you just create several versions of the token. So now I created two by accident, but that's fine. And I'll show you afterwards how you can actually burn some tokens. So, so we won't continue here with um, selling. What you can do is you can open up your account here on the top right hand corner of the screen. So you can click um, open a new window. And here you see the tokens that you've created. So as soon as you've minted the token, you've created it. So now what we'll do is we're gonna sell these tokens. But first of all, what I'll do is I've got this uh, NFT token twice and I don't want um, two versions of it. So what I'll do is here on the right hand side, I can click on the three dots and I can burn this token. So I'll click on burn. And now I have to sign this with my wallet. How many tokens I'd like to burn? I like to burn 100 of these tokens, so I click on burn tokens. I get a notification after I sign this transaction. This um, transaction is not going to cost a lot. This is going to be burn, and then I'll show you how you can actually sell the tokens. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to do it on the first window, since um, I do uh, often get a bug when minting new NFT tokens that I would just always ask again and again to mint new tokens and they won't continue to the next screen. I'm not really sure why it is for me. Maybe it's my browser. Um, let me know if you've got the same issue. So let's close this. I don't really need to keep this anymore since I've already minted the token, so I can also close this window. All right, so this is gonna probably take a while to, to burn these tokens. I can actually refresh the page And as you can see, I've only got um, one version left with 100 units. So what I'll do is I'll click on this and I just have to click on sale. I'll set the price, I think it was 0 0.05 uh, for 100, 2.5% service fee, and I will receive $20 for each token. So anyone that wants to support the channel, uh, of course, subscribe, leave a like, but I'd also highly uh, appreciate it if you uh, bought one of these uh, NFT tokens to show your support. Um, but of course, it's, it's, it's not mandatory. It's just a, a token of gratitude. So you can click on the next step. And I just have to sign my sell order. And I have to open up my wallet and sign this transaction again. So this is going to be funny uh, with a lot of numbers. I'm not sure if this is zooming correctly. I'm not sure if you can see that. I hope you can see that. And just click on OK and this transaction order. So I think the, the total price for the... Um, gas fees I had to pay to mint these NFT tokens is around 10 or 15 dollars.
And of course, it'd probably be a little bit less if I didn't have this bug and minted it twice uh, NFT tokens. But this is to show that the, and, and the, the whole DeFi space is still very experimental. You're going to have bugs here and there, um, dApps that are not working properly. But it just shows there's a lot of growth potential because if it's a so complicated, it means that there's still a quite high barrier to entry for a lot of people. So now this is uh, done and I can refresh this. And if I go to my account, I will see that this can be bought by anyone. I think this is a pretty nice uh, NFT token. I'll link it down below if anyone's interested in it. There's only going to be hundreds uh, of these tokens and I might burn some, um, the rest is not bought. But it definitely helps me out with buying new gear, um, investing more time into creating stuff for the channel. So yeah, basically that was the NFT non-fungible token guide on the use cases behind NFT tokens, the future growth of the space. I think there's a lot of potential, especially large companies coming into this uh, space and also showing you how you can uh, create and buy and burn some NFT tokens on Rarible. If you're interested in more videos like this, definitely leave a like, um, hit that subscribe button and also leave a comment down below giving your opinion on the whole topic of NFT tokens. Have you also bought some? I'm very interested to know that. With that said, I wish you a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.